Hello everyone and welcome back to uh, my astronomy journey. Um, today I just got a new scope delivered. It's a TechnoSky uh, 102 millimeter refractor uh, with FPL 53 objectives or lenses. It's the equivalent of the TS Optics and Altair Starwave um, refractors. Uh, it's basically the same, it's just uh, another vendor. The glass is made the same place. But uh, now let's uh, get the box opened. It's surprisingly small. Um, I didn't expect it and also very light. Uh, so I'm very excited to see the size of the scope itself. Uh, what I found really appealing was the retractable dew shield that many other refractors didn't have. Um, I considered the Skywatcher EvoStar 100 uh, ED which would be a super refractor for planetary observations. It has a focal length of 900 millimeters, whereas this one has a focal length of about 714, I believe. Uh, so the focal length is a little shorter, um, although you can get a lot more wide field observations or wide field eyepieces with this one that you wouldn't be able to in the Skywatcher refractor. All right, so let's see what's gonna be inside the box. Don't know if there'll be another box. There will. This is just a manual. Uh, don't need that right now. I've also purchased a Skywatcher Aldas 4 or AZ or AC4 mount for it, which will be delivered sometime else. I currently also have an Aldas head that I can use with the telescope. I'm really excited to see how light it is actually. Feels very light, but also very durable. Um, so let's try and take it out of the bag here. Also, something else I found really appealing was the focuser. It's a, I believe, a two and a half inch rack and pinion focuser, which should have no problem carrying my heavy Explorer Scientific 24 millimeter eyepiece. I have no problem holding it in one hand. Um, the entire scope is really small and compact. And the dew shield is very nice. Um, doesn't move easily. You have to force it, which I really like. Oh, I just pop off the cap. But here is the lens. And the lens cap sits nicely on there as well. Doesn't fall off easily. This looks really nice. Um, Gonna try to rack the focus in and out, just make sure it isn't locked. Feels very good, very smooth. The focuser feels very smooth, not too stiff, uh, definitely not too stiff. Um, but it feels a little sticky, which I assume is just because of the lubricant they use. Uh, I think this is going to improve over time, so I have to rack it out a couple of times. I really like the measurements on the tube itself, which can be useful for astrophotography or just knowing the exact uh, rack out distance that you need to use for different eyepieces. And also I believe the focuser is adjustable, rotatable, which is also really nice. And of course the slow motion control is here, very useful for, pla for uh, planetary observations. Overall, I mean, the scope looks really nice. I'm very satisfied with it. I'm just gonna place it on my mount and see how it does. The mount is only rated for five kilo max. I think this is uh, a little over four kilos, I believe, but let me try and mount it and uh, I'll get back to you. All right, so here is the scope mounted on my Manfrotto tripod. This mount actually handles the scope surprisingly well, especially in the horizontal axis. I am not sure how it's gonna handle high magnifications, which I assume isn't gonna be very good on this mount. Right now I have my uh, 1.25 inch Takahashi diagonal uh, with one of my Explorer Scientific eyepieces in there and it looks really good. Also I have the uh, laser dot, red dot finder on there which also looks really good. Uh, I'm definitely gonna use that with it. But if uh, we turn the scope around here and take a look at the lens, again lens cap easily detaches. And if we take a look down the objective here, you can notice the baffling actually looks really good. Um, 
You can actually see it from the other end from the focuser as well, small tiny baffles, uh, but they're placed all the way down the tube. So I expect that stray light won't be that much of a problem. And again, the dew shield is easy to retract. And all in all, it looks like a really good telescope. And the focuser, I just noticed that if you turn this knob, you can turn the entire focuser. So I've just turned it slightly and then you can grab it and rotate the entire focuser which I think is really nice. I'll try with my two inch 24 millimeter eyepiece in there um, in a minute. Also, I just thought it would be fun to compare this scope with my 72 millimeter refractor, which you can see here for scale is of course smaller, um, a lot smaller actually, but I'm surprised the Techno Sky doesn't weigh more. It doesn't seem to be as heavy as I as I thought it would be. I'm just gonna pop in the 24 millimeter eyepiece and test out the focuser. Uh, of course, I don't have a two inch diagonal yet, so I'm just gonna put it in straight through and see how it goes. All right, so here's my 24 millimeter Explorer Scientific 82 degree eyepiece mounted straight into the focuser. Uh, and I don't feel any problems when focusing. It's rock solid. The focuser actually makes my eyepiece look small compared to uh, when I've used it in other focusers. With my 24 millimeter eyepiece, I'll have a very low magnification and very large field of view. It's definitely going to be good for, you know, those wide field objects like uh, the Andromeda Galaxy, the Veil Nebula and North American Nebula and etc. But my first impressions of the scope is that it's a really well-built scope. I really appreciate the focuser. I haven't had a focuser this good before. So while I have these images running in the back, I just quickly want to go over the first couple of lights I've had with the telescope. I've had a couple opportunities to get out with it and observe the planets and do some deep sky observing under Bortle class five skies. And I'm really amazed with the telescope. Here's a video I captured of Mars at 380 times magnification and the view through the eyepiece was simply amazing. Uh, I had no problems focusing on the planet and the details remained sharp despite the high magnification. What I also really like about the refractor is the high contrast it supplies. Um, on planets like Jupiter and Mars, whose features are largely low contrast features, the high contrast of the refractor is just simply amazing at teasing out the faint details. When I got to try out the refractor under Bortle 5 skies, I was very surprised with uh, its capabilities on deep sky. With my O3 filter, I was able to observe the Veil Nebula with my 24 millimeter eyepiece. And I've also been able to observe the Dumbbell Nebula with great detail in my 14 millimeter, 8.8 and 6.7 millimeter eyepiece. At low magnifications in rich star fields, however, I do notice some slight distortion in the edges, um, but 90% of the field of view is still very much usable, and this could very much come down to my eyepieces instead of the scope. I'm also really a fan of the focuser and it handles my 24 millimeter eyepiece without any problems at all. All in all, I'm really satisfied with the scope uh, and I really enjoy using it. But this was my first impressions uh, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please take a look at my website at myastronomyjourney.wordpress.com and perhaps even subscribe to my YouTube channel. Clear skies.